Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our live stream. Uh, at this moment, uh, I encourage us, those who are at home, uh, to also participate in this Mass by uh, offer up an intention or something that you really want, whether it is for your family, for your loved one, or for someone, uh, or especially for yourself. And so I encourage you to do that at this moment. And so let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so to prepare ourselves for the secret mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that celebrating the mystery of the Lord's resurrection, we might emerge to receive the joy of our redemption. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cypriots and Cyrenians among them, however, who, come, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks as well, proclaiming the Lord of Jesus, the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart, for he was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to, to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church, and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All you nations praise the Lord. His foundation upon the holy mountains the Lord loves. The gates of Zion, more than any dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. All you nations praise the Lord. I tell of Egypt and Babylon among those who know the Lord, of Philistia, Tyre, Ethiopia, this man was born there, and of Zion, and of Zion they shall say, one and all were born in her, and he who has established her is the most high Lord. All you nations praise the Lord. They shall know when the peoples are enrolled, this man was born there, and all shall sing in their festive dance, my home is within you. All you nations, praise the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The feast of the dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus walked about in the temple area on the particle of Solomon. So the, the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, 
tell us plainly. Jesus answers them, I told you and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's gospel, Jesus is saying to each one of us, which side are we on? Are we on the one that who believe or on those side that who do not believe? So for those of us, who doubt or who do not believe, what do we have to lose? If we do not believe in Jesus Christ, most likely we will lose part of our humanity, part of being human. Why do I say that? It is because Jesus is fully God and fully human. And especially in today's society, for those who do not believe, we could see it more clearly that often they struggle to be fully human Why do I say that? It is because to be fully human means we have to answer the call of Jesus Christ to give of ourselves. And if we do not believe in Jesus Christ, it becomes more difficult. For example, Many women are called to motherhood, meaning that they carry their child in their womb. And it is a sacrifice of many things to be able to do that. But often those who do not believe in Jesus Christ, then for some of them, it is only a choice that they make whether to have an abortion or not. And when they do that, they no longer consider the child in the womb as a human being, as a person. And so for them, they do that in some way because our, whether that is carrying the child is inconvenient. Carrying the child is limiting them for many things. And that is the difference between those who believe in Jesus Christ and those who do not. Because Jesus is the one that gives of his life. And so that's why all Christians are called to do the same, to imitate Jesus Christ. And so when a woman carries the child, it is a sacrifice, it is a calling. It is not easy. And of course, even though those who are Christian, those who are Catholic, some of them because whether that, that is they doubt or whether that is they do not believe in Jesus Christ fully, and so some do, denying that motherhood. And of course, for everyone, 
for a father, for a grandmother, for a sibling. Everyone are called to think of others. And that is what Jesus Christ taught us. The part of being fully human, meaning that we have to think of others, meaning that we have the capability to give up ourselves for others. For the younger generation, for future. Animal cannot do that. They do not, in many ways, cannot think of a way to help the younger generation, the way that human being able to do that. But when we do that, that means we have to sacrifice. We have to give of ourselves. Another example of that is resources that we have, whether that is water or natural resources or even our own wealth, the money, the house and stuff that we have. When we believe in Jesus Christ, then that means God is calling us to think about others, whether that is our children or someone else. And so as a Christian, we call to be mindful of those resources. And when we do not do that, then we lose part of our being. Because to be human is to answer the call to sacrifice. And when we live in a society that no longer encourages us to do that, then we often do not live fully. What happens when someone is selfish, someone do not think about others? At that moment, they are limited. Because they tend to focus on themselves. And when they do that, no matter how much they have in their life, it is never enough. But when someone who gives of themselves most often when they do that, they feel a fulfillment. They feel at peace. And if you do not believe me, there are those out there who are very wealthy, who are billionaires. And perhaps we might assume that they are happy because they have those things. And yet, they are not. It is because in some way, it's never enough for them. Because from the beginning, when God created human being, He put in us the desire to give of ourselves. And if we do not practice that, if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, then it becomes more difficult for us to do that, to fulfill that part of our being. And that's why, especially for our youth, when you become selfish or when you doubt or when you do not believe in Jesus Christ, what you have is never enough. And you keep trying to get this and get that. And then when you get it, It's not enough. You need something else. Why is that? It is because you are not answering or not living fully 
Because to live fully, to be fully human, like I said, that means we have to think about others. We have to sacrifice. We have to give part of ourselves the way Jesus Christ did. And only when we do so that we truly recognize and that when we call to sacrifice, then that is when we feel at peace. That is when we feel we are fully human. That is when we become happy. We become content. And so for those of us who do not believe, we have everything to lose. Because to live without being fully human, that is a sad way to live. But for those who believe in Jesus Christ and we try our best to imitate him, though many times we make mistakes, though many times we fail, but We are trying on the path to be fully human. Because to be fully human is also to sacrifice. It's also a call of giving of oneself. Whether that is giving our life the way A mother did when she chose to give life to her child and in doing so, giving up her own life. For example, when she has some kind of cancer and she do not want to have chemotherapy or other treatment because that will harm her child. And so she gave up her life for her child. And yet only human being able to do that. Only human beings are capable of doing that. And especially for those who are Christians, for those who believe in Jesus Christ, that calling is part of that. And that is how we fulfill to live out our human life. And we live it to the fullest when we give of ourselves, especially of our life. Let us pray for our Pope, all the bishops and all the clergy, as they continue to lead our church, that they recognize their calling especially to sacrifice for others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for each one of us who are at home at this moment. We are also called to sacrifice, that is the desire, that is to be here, to be able to receive communion, to be with one another. And yet, at this moment, we offer that up so that it becomes a sacrifice of giving of ourselves for others at this moment also. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all of those who are affected by COVID-19, especially those who are dying at this moment, that they too recognize the call of giving of oneself especially giving up one life to be a witness for Christ, and that may at this moment they have the strength to become more like Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all our political leaders as they make policy, as they lead their country, that they also turn to Jesus Christ to answer the call of self-giving, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all the special intention that we hold deep in our hearts. We also pray for today's Mass intention. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty God, today you're reminding us that if we do not believe, it will become more difficult for us to fully be human. 
And so at this moment, we ask you to strengthen us, and especially for those of us who doubt, for those of us who do not know you, that you give us a sign so that we to fully live the way that you did. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have to see the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we might always find delight in this Paschal mysteries, so that the reward constantly at work within us might be the cause of our unending joy. To Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty is at all time to claim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to allow you yes more graciously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifice of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commanding himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the author, the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exhaust in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with a jonic host sing together the unending hymn as they are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down the Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they might become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
you know, similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and one more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and, and profess, profess your resurrection, resurrection until, until you come, come again. again. Dear Father, we celebrate the moment of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the challenge of salvation, giving thanks that you have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that protecting of the body and blood of Christ, we might be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and yet our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we might merge to be co-heir to eternal life and my praise and God in you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, our mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and forever. As our Savior command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. There is a Lord, we pray from every evil, and gracefully grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress, and we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, 
Lamb of God, behold him who take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Alleluia. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us might bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. To Christ our whole Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.